A flashlight is a great tool, but it's only good when it's turned on. Let's talk about it. Ooh, light. Okay, that's annoying, I'm sure. Nobody likes having a flashlight shined in their eyes, and we definitely don't like driving down the road at night with the person behind us shining his or her high beams at us. It's not fun. However, when walking through a dark house at night and the power's off, give me the biggest, brightest, boldest light or flashlight you can find. Why? Because stepping on Legos hurts. All you parents out there who have kids who play with Legos can relate to that. Legos hurt. I don't want to step on them. And it's not just Legos. Any toy with any kind of a point or edge or corner, it hurts to step on. In fact, there's another thing that actually hurts to step on, and that's marbles. Our son loves playing with marbles. And when I step on a marble at night, oh, it hurts. I don't want to see those marbles on the floor and no, correction, I do want to see those marbles on the floor and I don't want to step on them. And so when the house is dark, I will turn on a light. I'll get a flashlight. I'll get a lamp if the power's off because I don't want to hurt myself. A light does these things. A light helps us see where we're going. A light helps keeps us safe as we're going through a house or down a path. A light helps us see what's ahead of us. A light helps keeps us secure. A light shows us the way. A light shows us things that we want to see. And sometimes it shows us things we don't really want to see. But that's the nature of light. It shows us things. Well, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. It's a short passage we're going to be looking at today, but that's okay. Well, in this passage, Jesus is going to be talking about light as it relates to the church. And we're going to see what Jesus says about the church, or Christians, and light. Before we get into that, if you haven't done it already, be sure and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, go ahead and do all that, because it really does help the channel, and I do appreciate it. So all that being said, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about light and the church. In these three verses, we're going to see three things. First, we're going to see that Jesus calls his followers the light of the world. Then we're going to see instructions on what not to do. And then he's going to tell us or indicate to us what the ultimate purpose is. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first thing. And that is the Christians, the church, the followers of Jesus being the light of the world. In verse 14, Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Now, why does Jesus call the church or Christians the light of the world? Well, that's because Christians are supposed to be the ones that offer the right direction, that offer the world the way to go, the ones that show the gospel and live the gospel and preach the gospel that helps show people their sin and their need for Jesus. We are supposed to be the ones that bring the good news and live the good news in the world. However, it's not our light that's shining. Instead, it's the light of Jesus who is the light himself, shining in us and through us. We are the light of the world because we have Jesus in our lives. We are the light of the, of the world. Try that again. We are the light of the world because we follow and obey Jesus. Or at least we're supposed to. We are the light of the world. Now, he also mentions the city that's on the hill, but he really goes back to the light. And so that's what I'm focusing on in this little devotional. We are the light, a city that is seen, a light that is seen, visible. And we should let the light of Jesus shine in us and through us. So how do we do that? Well, it's through our works. It's through the things that we do. It's not just the words we say. It's the actions we take in which the light of Jesus is most brightly shining. When we show compassion and love to other people, the light of Jesus is shining. When we live out the gospel and show them through our actions that we love Jesus, the light of Jesus is shining. When we take time to help those in need, the light of Jesus is shining. When we show kindness and mercy and compassion to the heartbroken, the light of Jesus is shining. When we show love to those who spit in our face and mock us and hate us, 
the light of Jesus is shining. You get the point? We need to show the light through our actions. However, we don't always do that, which leads us to the second thing Jesus says, and that is in verse 15. He says, Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. What Jesus is saying is this, Don't hide the light. Now, how do we hide the light? Well, when we choose not to act on our faith, we're hiding the light. When we say we love Jesus, yet act like we don't love anybody, we're hiding the light. When we refuse to help, or even worse, show indifference, we're hiding the light. When we fail to share the gospel with someone because of whatever reason, we're hiding the light. When we refuse to help, we're hiding the light. When we don't act on our faith, when we don't live out our faith, when we don't show the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we're hiding the light. And we're not to hide the light. Instead, we're to let that light shine brightly. Now, that doesn't mean we're supposed to be doing it in a way that is, you know, boastful and a bragging type of way. We're not supposed to be trying to get attention of the world and have them all look at us and praise us. No. In fact, Jesus told us not to do things for worldly gain or worldly praise. Because if we do, then the praise we get is our just reward. No, we're supposed to be doing things for another purpose, which leads us to the final verse in this little short passage. In verse 16, Jesus said, In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus is saying, let your light shine for what purpose? So God will be glorified. We do things for other people because we love God and because we want to show God's love to those around us. And we do it so that God gets the glory. It's not our glory to be received. It's God's glory. And when we take the glory and point it to ourselves and we say, look at our great church or look at my great faith or look at our great small group, then we're taking God's glory and claiming it for ourselves. We do things so that more people can be brought in, so that they can be saved, so that they can then glorify God along with us. It's about Him and His purposes. So, let me just bring all this home. This passage is really short and very simple. We are to be the light of the world, letting Jesus' light shine through us and shine upon those around us. We do so by the things that we do. It's how we act and how we treat people. When we show kindness, mercy, compassion, grace, then Jesus' light is shining. But when we show animosity or indifference, then we're hiding the light. When we share the gospel with someone and give them a chance to receive Jesus, then the light of Jesus is shining. But when we stay silent and do not tell others about Jesus, then we're hiding the light. We're not to hide the light. Instead, we're supposed to let the light shine. We're supposed to be out there doing the work that we're called to do of helping those around us and serving those around us because we love God and because we love people. But we don't do so in a way that brings attention to us. No. Instead, we do it so that they can join us in glorifying God so that they can lift up with us the name of Jesus. That's why we serve. That's why we do things, to bring God glory. How are you bringing God glory through serving others? How are you going to start if you haven't been doing so already? If you have been, what have you been doing? Comment below and let me know. I want to hear what you've been doing. I want to join with you in praising God. I want to hear about the fruit that's come out of it. I want to hear if people have gotten saved. I want to rejoice with you and give glory to Jesus for what he's doing through you. I hope this lesson has been helpful. I hope this devotional is helpful. In the meantime, I will see you in the next video. Know that I do love you, and I will see you next time. God bless. If you enjoy the content on this channel, then check out the merch, MP3s, and more at johnrotra.com.